Hey guys, digital anchor Brandy Smith here, live from the Beer Can House. We're calling this a hidden gem today because this is one of those places a lot of people have heard of and you've probably seen pictures of it all over social media, but so few people have been here. This story is coming up at six o'clock, so I don't want to get too much into the history and preservation efforts of the house itself just yet. But this, where we're standing right now, ignore the um, sneakers I'm wearing, this is where the project started. And I want to bring in Pete from The Orange Show to tell us about John Milkovich, the guy who, who began this project by paving his backyard. Well, sure. Yeah, that's right. John Milkovich was a, a pollster for the railroad. He was a consummate craftsperson. And when he started this work on this yard, he built this patio cover in 1968 when he paid off the mortgage, needed a floor to put underneath, wanted to decorate it, so he started uh, pushing his uh, marble collection uh, into the wet cement here. And you can see the doorknob there that says 1968, so we have an accurate date for this work. Uh, and then he, from there, he just filled up the yard and the driveway out to the front of the house and covered the whole thing. And we're going to talk about the house coming up at 6. I'm going to keep pushing you guys to tune in to KHU 11 News at 6 in the Hidden Gems segment. But one of the things you guys just started doing back here is the Beer Can House Gardening Club. Yes. How did it get its start and what's the goal there? Uh, well, uh, I had noticed that the uh, yard had gotten a little bit weedy and a little unkempt and needed a little bit of love. And I thought a garden club seemed like a fun idea. I don't know anything about gardening. But we found some people who do. We've got some really active participants, and we meet here on Sunday afternoons at 3 o'clock in good weather. Uh, and we're going to get some butterfly plants in. We're going to get an herb garden. We're focusing on uh, community micro gardening projects that we can work on together and build a little uh, community and fun out here. Because one of the things you mentioned before is that this house used to be vibrant, oh, yeah. but the sun has leached all the color out of some of these beer can labels. So you are interested in bringing some more pops of color back here. Yeah, that's exactly right. The artwork's pretty monochrome right now. And this yard, if you can imagine back into the 80s, uh, there was a tree that shaded the yard. It was very lush. There were plants everywhere and sculptures and decorations. Uh, and we want to bring back a little bit of that vibe to the yard, make it something really special. So I'm seeing the fresh mulch in a couple yeah. of places. Is that the, the work of the gardening club? Oh, sure. Yeah, we've uh, we've got to start. Nothing's really growing quite yet. We uh, had some really beautiful marigolds here and that frost we had a couple of weeks ago took care of those. Uh, but uh, we're getting into the growing season, so we're going to be spending a lot more time out here and uh, we're going to make it look really beautiful for you. And you said that's Sundays at 3. Yeah, Sundays at 3. Not going to be here this Sunday at 3, but most Sundays at 3. And then when we do get into the growing uh, season, we're going to spend a lot more time out here. Now, Sundays and also Saturdays are the days when visitors can come by and check out the Beer Can House for themselves. That's right. we got a docent here who can give them a tour and they can go inside the house and take a look at the yard, but also the very well-preserved interior. Uh, it's a really fun way to spend a weekend afternoon. Because it is so preserved. The house itself was built in the 30s. Yep. John started this project in the 60s. Yep. What kind of era are we looking at in there? Oh, well, you're looking at all the original fixtures, the original colors. Only one family ever lived in this house, and the Orange Show Foundation bought it from the original family in 2001. So it's been extremely well preserved. You'll see the original range, the original icebox, and of course, all of John's own original artwork. He did all the linoleum on the floor and uh, the uh, Which inlaid. is so cool. Yeah. Because it's so intricately cut. Yeah. You can tell he was a craftsman. And it's perfect. Like, look at any piece of it, and there are no gaps. It's perfect. So there's also a visitor sign-in sheet in there, or a guest book yep. that you can sign in if you want to come down. And again, that's Saturdays and Sundays. Yep. What are the hours for, for when you guys are open? <laughs> oh, I'll, you'd sorry. Think I, you'd Pop think quiz. I would know. You can find that out on khu.com. We have the article up. No, orange no pressure show, on you. Orangeshow.org. Just go to orangeshow.org and you'll see everything there. You know what? And that brings up a good point. Orange Show, you guys preserved the beer can house but you guys are also responsible for the art car parade for smither park yep. for the orange show itself yeah what is the orange show all about uh well the orange show center for visionary art is the organization that preserves and programs these various properties the orange show itself is a visionary art environment it was built uh, on Munger Street, very close to the Gulf Freeway, between 1955 and 79 by a retired postman named Jeff McKissick. Um, he really was, uh, he thought that the orange was the perfect food, and uh, he really wanted to uh, get this across to people in a very visually stimulating way. 
That's another stop for sure on our Hidden Gems Tour. There's okay. so many related to the Orange Show, but Beer Can House is the first one. Again, tune in to KHU 11 News at 6. That's when the segment is airing. And if you have a hidden gem I need to go check out, I want to hear about it. You can email me, bsmith at khou.com. It is that easy. Uh, you can also watch all of the Hidden Gems segments we've done to date. I want to say there are five or six. Just pop over to our YouTube page, that's KHU11 on YouTube. Look for the Living in the Lone Star Hidden Gems playlist. You can also watch on our Roku or Fire TV apps. So lots of options to watch, especially if you're binging. You want to learn more about these little nuggets that we have stashed all over the city because there are so many. I'm going to go home and watch them all. Oh, look at that. Pete, I'm not even paying him. Well, I guess I, I probably should now. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for this Facebook Live. We'll see you back on KHU 11 News at 6.